Mr. Reverend Stanley, it is good to see St. Peter on the line again tonight and good to know that there's so many that are on the phone line tonight. I'm grateful for you that have been with us all day and, you know, say, I'm going to come on and get my 30 more minutes tonight. I'm grateful for you today and tonight. And I thank God for, again, what he's doing in our midst. Thank you, Reverend Stanley, for opening us up today with a strong prayer, the powerful word of God. We again here in the book of 1 John. Uh, 1 John has, you know, and I, I think I've said this before. I never really picked the Bible. says so the Lord has just showed me something and said, here's where we're going next. And so 1 John was an example. I was reading something else and went to 1 John, and the Lord said, that's where we are. And so that's where we are. But I think in 1 John, we've learned quite a bit about God's love for us through John. John, again, shares for us the, not just um, the, the, the impetus for just knowing God generally. He wants us to have a fellowship with him. He wants us daily to walk with the Lord, just like he did. He wants us to feel the comfort and the connection with Jesus, just like he did. He, he don't want us to feel like Jesus is far away. He wants to know that Jesus is right there with us. And I think that's the under, the undergirding of the book of 1 John. And he talks about things that will or break our fellowship. He talked about sin, talked about how it's addressed. Uh, he talked about the necessity of love to keep us walking in the light. He talked about um, the, 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 um, the, the uh, different levels in our Christian growth, not levels of like God is measuring us, somebody got to eat, somebody got to be, but how we grow in Christ. And tonight, uh, we're going to get an introduction to a few things that are that are essential. And, and, and I want to say this before I start. These things are things we probably heard about, but I pray that God would open up, open up to us in another way, a different, deeper way that we would understand what it is we need to, uh, what we need, A, what we need to do, what we need to avoid. And then secondarily, he opens us to what we should share with those who are in trouble. Now, let's pick up tonight at first at, at first John chapter two. Um, and let's begin at verse 18. Let's begin at verse 18. Um, John, after he is told about that we must not love the present world, because he said that he realizes that's the challenge that we face, loving the present world. But he said, no, I don't want not only I don't want you not to love the present world, I want you to be on the lookout. Look at verse 18. He says, little children, it is the last time. He said, it's the, it's the last time. He said, it's, what he's saying is, it's the, it's the time is growing long. It is the last days, is what he's saying. And somebody could say, well, um, it's been a long time. How, you know, it, Jesus still ain't come back. But, but John wasn't talking about a chronological time. He wasn't talking about a clock time. He was simply saying that he was living in expectation of the coming of Jesus. And today in 2021, I challenge us that we should live as well in the expectation of the coming of Jesus. Now, we live in the expectation of God moving our lives, but we should also live in the expectation of the coming of Jesus. Paul said this right here. He, 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 challenged, um, um, <clears throat> he challenged Timothy, but he said, all those who love is coming, there's a crown for all those who love is coming. What does that mean? Those who are looking forward to his coming. And so he says it's the last time. It's, the, it's later days, latter days. It's the end times. And again, that's the posture that all Christians should take. But then he says, now, and as, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, he says, brothers, sisters in Christ, you heard that the Antichrist, that Antichrist will come, uh, shall come. Let me define that Antichrist. Sometimes we think that the Antichrist is the opposite of Christ, but that's actually not accurate because that word anti means the opposite of, or it can as well mean instead of. And so Jesus uh, is the Christ. And all that we see in Jesus, the love, the mercy, the peace, the power, the compassion, the Antichrist is someone who will be who people will select instead of Christ. You know, that, that's what the Antichrist is. And, and so what does we say? The Antichrist shall come. He says the Antichrist is coming. That person that people, that person whom people will select instead of Christ is coming. Now, let's keep going. Even as now there are many Antichrists. John, John said right now in his time and even in today's time, there are many people who are presenting themselves instead of Christ. All right, I want you, I want to, I'm going to try to take it slow here. Um, people who are presenting themselves instead of Christ. And John said, that's why we know, verse 18, that we are in the latter days, we're in the last days. John saw it and said, we're in the latter days. In other words, Jesus is on the way back. We see it, and that means we know that Jesus is on the way back. And John then goes on in verse 19 to define those who should we be? we should be looking out for. He says, they went out from us. Here's the key element. John says the Antichrist, those who are people uh, who are presenting themselves to be selected instead of Christ. He says they, at some point in time, were a part of the body of Christ. Now, not in a legitimate sense, but they were in the crowd. You know what I'm saying? They were at the church. 
They were in the building. They may have walked with Jesus, but didn't follow Jesus. They may have wanted to see what Jesus was going to do, but they weren't trying to be submit themselves in the, the life of Christ. They may have been around what Paul was preaching or what Peter was preaching, but they did not really want to subscribe to what the teaching was. They wanted to see what they could glean from what was, what was saying and then try to elevate themselves to be a person who was chosen instead of Christ. We heard about the false teachers. We heard about the false teachers. The false teachers are those who perverted the word to cause people to follow them. And I believe we all understand today, and if you don't, let me be clear, there are people out there today who are doing the same thing religiously, but there are also people who are doing it um, um, economically and politically who are trying to present themselves as the, the true way to, to success, the true way to deliverance, in other words, the true way to victory. See, the world, quite frankly, is more interested in victory than it is in a relationship with God. The world, I'm talking about the world system, um, is, is more not, it's not interested in submission, but it's interested in oppression. If you, you, I, I got a group of friends, we talk about this. Every, like, all the world system is, is lined up against even people who don't have to have anything. Honestly, if you take a good look at all of the, the, um, the 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 what do you call those things the 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 the, the things that Trump started and, and and unfortunately Biden continues to to try to keep putting money in folks' account. That's designed to make people dependent on money as opposed to dependent on the Lord. That's what it's designed for. Now, I know somebody, and it's okay if you got it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that the, if for the for the person who doesn't know the Lord. And, oh, we got $1,500. Here's what's going to happen nine times out of 10. They're going to spend it all. And they're going to be what, craving more of that. And so their craving is not for the Lord. Their craving is for stuff, things, money, things like that. Mm -hmm. And so the world system is designed uh, to do that. The world system is designed to, 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 subject, to, 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 to come in instead of Christ. To, to be the head instead of Christ. We always hear people talking about a new world order. That's what the polit politicians say. And so the Antichrist, the person that people present themselves to be chosen instead of Christ, are people who are trying to insert themselves in people's lives to suppress, to supplant. That's what I'm looking for, to supplant the superiority of Christ in our lives. Now, I, I'm talking to the choir, but at the same time, I'm encouraging the choir to not only know this work. And when I say I'm talking to the choir, I'm talking to everybody who's on here tonight because I think we know better. But I also want us to be on the lookout because we got to be on the lookout. You can live in the safest neighborhood in America, but if somebody says so and so is running loose through your neighborhood, you're going to be on the lookout. You're going to go make sure you got right. your alarm on, make sure your doors are locked. You're going to be looking if your, um, if your outdoor lights um, come on, you're going to be looking. Here's what John is saying You're in Christ. We're safe in Christ, but we still need to be on the lookout. We still need to be on the lookout for the Antichrist. Now, kids keep going in, in chapter 2, verse 19. Um, they went out from us. They were with us, but they went out from us. But he moves on to say they were not of us. For if they had really been a part of the body of Christ, they really believed that Jesus was their Savior and that God raised from the dead, he says they would no doubt have continued with us. Now, it's going to get tough. Can I talk tough? Somebody give me a thumbs up. I can talk tough. Talk Talk tough, talk tough. This is going to be, and because it, it, even as I studied, it was very impactful to me, very tough to me. Yes, sir. Here's the reality. Yes, He's saying this, that there are some who rolled with and rolled in the body of Christ, but when something didn't go their way, they left the body of Christ. How many of us know that people yeah. that walk Yeah, yeah. Don't hear pastor on Zoom. Goes out. I got you. We don't hear pastor. Welcome to the conference. Church. I know he's gonna be attacking on that. Yeah. Okay, now I know something that matters in white things. 
Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yes. Go, go, go in, go, go in. Go go in. Right. What happened? He's muted again. Thank you, Miss Simpson. Thank you so much. I let me. I know the Reverend stand now. I know something happening now. <laughs> let me try one more time. We know that the Antichrist is present, and we know that the Antichrist, rather, present that are here. That their whole job and responsibility are to lead people from Christ to them. They don't have no heaven or hell. They don't have no way of salvation deliverance, but their whole work is to get people to follow them. How many times have we seen people, uh, even in politics, we can look back just a few years, few months ago, we had a president. He didn't care about folk. He cared about people right. following him. And there was a cult of personality. There are people right now who still, if Trump said he's going to be at the Civic Center, there ain't even no real building. They run down there to follow him. Right there are people right. on small levels all over the world who are trying to get to, to pair people off from their following faith and trust in Jesus Christ to follow them. And that's the element that we must be aware of as Christians. We must, when people come to us, and I remember very vividly, man, it's been about, oh, I've been pastor 17 years, let's say 15, 14 years ago, 15 years ago, I was at the church um, praying one Sunday morning. A lady came in and she, I, she sat down in the front row and just wept. And I was praying on the altar and when I came around and talked to her, so what's wrong? She said, I just feel like a fool. And I said, what happened? She said, I just followed this man. And, you know, she was talking about a pastor. She said, I followed him because he said, if I followed him, I could get a car, I could get a house, I could get this, that, and the third. And she said, I lost everything I had following him. That is an example of Antichrist. Somebody who is so selfish and self-centered, there's nothing in them that wants to help somebody else. They use the word as a, as a trick to bring people and pull people away. They won't read the whole chapter. They'll read one word or one sentence to draw people away. <laughs> Likewise, in the world, there's always a Lenin, there's always a Hitler, there's always a Stalin, there's always a Saddam Hussein who is trying to, 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 to draw people away from them. And even if they're Islam, in other words, they want to be the personality that people follow. Jesus' ministry was never about personality. It was never about following him because he was po he was popular, because he said the right things. It was about following him because he led and leads people to salvation. John says it very clearly, these people, these antichrists, they went out that they may be made manifest that they were not all of us. He said, and they're going out. And he said, you can see them. In other words, if you are in that mature level where we talked about yesterday, if you are a mature Christian, that's why I think he put this on the heels of that. He said, if you are a mature Christian, you can see it. But it ain't enough for you to see it. You got to tell somebody about it so that somebody else doesn't lose their salvation or miss okay. out on salvation because they're following a personality as, a, as opposed to the person of Jesus Christ. If you're a good friend, you got a good friend and your friend is somewhere and they're in trouble, you don't just say, well, I was going to tell you, but you know, I ain't want you to say nothing. That ain't what we do. We say, I want to tell you that where you are, you're in trouble. You are, there's, there's a situation developing that you are subject. If a tornado come and we're watching the news and they say a tornado coming through such a place, if you got a friend over there, you come and say, are you in the basement? Are you in the basement? If you're in the basement, go to the basement to be safe. That's the same posture that mature Christians have to have toward others so that we can tell them to be careful, to be watchful. And if we see them in trouble, we see the tornado of personality, the tornado of Antichrist coming their way. If the tornado of Antichrist coming their way, what do we do? We tell them, be careful, watch out, and run away. Let me read verse 20. Here's why we should know. But we, ye, he's saying to, to, he's saying to all the believers that with emphasis on all the believers that exist today, ye, you have a unction. From the Holy One, and you know all things. Paul says this: We have an unction. What does that mean? That we have the movement, the presence, the power of the Holy Spirit, and that's what he said, the Holy One. And we know all things. What does that mean? That means that it means we're geniuses. No, true. Hard to fit three IQ. It that means through the Holy Spirit, He's able to reveal to us things that we would not be able to understand or see in our physical minds. That's what it means. How many of us can look back over our lives and realize it was God 
the Holy Spirit that kept us from doing something wrong. How many, how many know that? Yes. yes we were sir. walking yes, off sir. the cliff and the Holy Spirit said, nope, pull back and you pull back. And sometimes yes. it wasn't even that we were walking with the Lord. It was just that the Holy Spirit, it just would not let us go farther than we would go. He wanted us to go and pulled us back. Sometimes I believe when we took some time and started by about 14, 15 minutes, we come to the realization that there were multiple times in our life when we didn't even have a sense to do right, but the Holy Spirit kept us from doing wrong. That's what the Holy Spirit, right. and guess what? The Holy Spirit didn't just do it. The Holy Spirit does it even right now in our lives. That's why we had to be yeah. in a relationship with God so that we can be led by the Holy Spirit of God so that we would then know what God wants us to know, that we can recognize the Antichrist. We can recognize those who are trying to, to lead us away from the, from, from the Lord. We can recognize false teaching. We can recognize anything that the material of a worldly stuff that can pull us away from the Lord, that we recognize it for what it is, that we recognize it's not going to bless us, but we recognize our blessings come from the Lord because he is the giver of every good and perfect gift. Paul says in verse 21, I love the way the Reverend Stanley, how Paul keeps telling us why he's writing this. Paul said, I'm writing this. Verse 21, I'm writing unto you because you know not the truth, but because you, not because you don't know, because you know not the truth, but because you know it and that no lies are the truth. Let me read that again. I have written, not written to you because you know not the truth. Paul said, I didn't write it because you don't know it. He said, I'm writing to you know the because difference. you know it and then no lie is of the truth. He said, I'm writing this to you so that you just be reminded of the yeah. truth of the word of God and that you would understand that the truth is the truth and a lie is a lie. We, we know that, don't we? He just wants right. us to understand when somebody's telling us something that a, we know is a lie, when you know the word and you, you know the spirit of God tells us a lie, don't, don't play with it. Don't deal with it. Yeah. Know it's a lie and know that the truth is the truth and we are to walk in the what? We are to walk in the truth. Okay, I'll give you one more verse. Now, he says here, right here in verse 22, he said, who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? That mm -hmm. person... That denies. It says Jesus ain't Christ. Jesus is a good guy. Jesus is a prophet. Jesus is a good teacher. That person is lying because Jesus is the Christ. What does that mean? He is the anointed one sent from God to the world to provide salvation for the world. When John, when Jesus said um, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, he didn't say God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, you know, to help us. He gave his only begotten son that we might have life. In life everlasting. He says, the person that denies that Jesus is the anointed one, that person is Antichrist that denies Antichrist. the Father and the Son. Because in denying that Jesus is the Son of God, you are then, in fact, denying then that Jesus is God. And anybody that can stand and say, well, no, you know, and sometimes it's not as bold as, as them saying that. But whenever you hear teaching that leads you away from Christ the Savior, that's leading you away from God as Father. And if you led away from God as father, then you are, in fact, uh, have picked and selected the Antichrist or Antichrist. Verse 23 says this, whosoever denied the son. I, I remember reading this when I was first God preaching. Whosoever denied the son, that's Jesus Christ, the same has they not the father. father. They don't know the father. But, but he that acknowledges the son has also the father. In other words, if you confess with your mouth, and this is where salvation, this is salvation right here. Salvation yeah. is not the church you go to. Salvation is your willingness to say, I believe that Jesus died for me. And I believe yes. that God raised from the dead. He said, if you acknowledge that the Son hath the Father also. When you say that, then you believe that Jesus is your Savior. But you also receive the Father as your Father. That's why in the book of Romans, uh, we recognize that we're as and joined as a Christ. I love that. I love that, that when Jesus comes back, that I won't be a second-class citizen in heaven because there's no second-class citizens in heaven. If you believe that Jesus died for you, no matter what you had down here, that we are all heirs and joint heirs with Christ. I wish I could go a little further and say this right here. I remember a preacher preached one time, Reverend Stanley. He said that when we get to heaven, the angels will be trying to figure out which one is Jesus. Why we say that? Yes. Because the Bible says we will look like him. Hallelujah. Lord so the mercy. angels have mercy. would never have seen Jesus in the way we've experienced him. And they'll be saying, now, which one is Jesus? Because they have seen him in heaven. But we're going to look just like Jesus. We're going to look just like Jesus. Lord have mercy. And, and so we, the angels won't be to tell us apart. Why and when? That's because we believe and acknowledge that Jesus is the Savior, the Christ, the anointed one sent from God. And in doing so, we have a right Thank relationship you, with God through him. I'm going to stop tonight, but I believe that John has continued to drop some deep 
um, um, apostolic doctrine on us. He has given us the depth. He is moving us in this book right here from a place of just the knowledge of Christ and understanding our sins are forgiven to a place where we can overcome the evil one, but then to a place where we know more and more about the Lord. And that's what he said in chapter one. He said, I'm writing this so that we can all have a fellowship with Jesus. Yeah. And verse four says, and in doing so, I got to read one more. Can I read one more time? He said in verse read four, more. he read said, and in, in doing the, in, in these things, have a fellowship with Christ that we may have full joy. He said, your joy may be full. I don't know about you, but I love something full. I don't like a half a cup of, of coffee. I want a full cup. I don't want a half a cup of orange juice. I want a full cup. And I don't want half of the joy that the Lord has made available to me. I want the fullness of the joy that the God has made available to us, to us through Jesus Christ. I'm going to stop here tonight at 725. But I sure thank God for these few verses, and I thank God that he has used John to speak to the church of Ephesus, but also speak to the church of St. Peter in 2021, all of the family and friends, that we have more knowledge about God. We talked about this morning. You got to know him, and know him is not just about hearing about him. Knowing him is him, is knowing the word. Jesus said, I found where? Well, in the pages of the book. And here we are, finding out more and more about the Lord. Let me stop tonight before I start a whole other Bible study. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we love you so much, and we thank you so much for all of the grace and the blessings and mercy that you have poured out upon us through Jesus Christ. God, you have granted us unmerited favor. You have given us your love and kindness, new mercies every morning. God, you have granted us uh, um, peace and joy, peace that surpasses all understanding and fullness of joy in our fellowship and relationship with you. And I pray tonight, God, that you would just let this not be a localized operation, but let it bless our families and our households as we seek you. God, I pray that households will be blessed as a result of the individuals who are on the phone line. I pray that the whole families will be blessed as a result of, of all those yes, who are on the phone and the Zoom line. God, I remember in the book of 1 Samuel, that you told in Second Samuel is David brought the ark back to the back to was bring the ark to Jerusalem. That when he had a problem, that he took the ark to Kerjus Jerim, and while the ark was there, that family was blessed. I pray God that the knowledge of Christ will be a blessing to all of the families. That others who are in Christ, who are not in Christ, will come to Christ as a result of what we're doing here on the expectation moment. God, I pray that you let your word get in our hands and feet that we can serve you. Let your word get in our hearts that we can be strengthened in our inner man. Let your word get in our ears so that even as we hear all the shrillness of the world, we will hear you over all of that. Let your word get in our minds, Lord, that our minds will be stayed on you and that we will have peace and surpassing. Lord, let your word get in our minds so that the fiery dots of Satan will be quenched. God, let your word get in our mouths, our, our lips, our vocal cord, our tongues, our throats, our lungs, so that we can declare your word to the world, oh God, to each other, oh Lord, and to ourselves. God, let it be so. Let it in be Jesus' so. name. In the name say, of Jesus. Thank, thank you, Lord. Thank and you, Lord. Amen. amen. God bless you, St. Peter. Amen. Missionary amen. Baptist Church. Hold on, Zoom. Love your phone line. So, let me see what we got on Zoom. And I got Thomas is coming in strong from the They got a strong signal out there. Thank got you, Mother Vaughn right over here on MLK. Rev Stan is over off Camerton. Rev Brown is over there, not too far from the church. Rev Led is a little further out. Sister Roxanne, God bless you. When I find out your address, I'm going to tell you what, tell you what part of town you're in. <laughs> Decatur. Got Sister Roseanne from Sister Roseanne from Decatur. Got the lines out there off of Pantsville. Sister Common Gordon. Sister, Sister Lines over here, not too far from the church. Sister Andretta. Uh, Sister Barbara Favors. I sure love y'all. And I can't wait to see y'all tomorrow. I'm in Kanye's house. Huh? I'm in Kanye's house. You in Kanye's house. All right. We got no God bless you. I know next time. God bless you. I love y'all. See y'all tomorrow. Have a good week. Have a good week. Hey, y'all. Happy birthday, lady. Hey. It's Ross' birthday, y'all. It's Ross' birthday. Tell her happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Ross. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Deborah. Happy birthday, Deborah. Happy birthday, Deborah. Happy birthday, Deborah. Yeah. Yes, I'm tired. I'm going out. I'm going out. And now I'm in the kitchen cooking at 730. That's the truth. Still got to cook for my dad. Hey, Miss Luna. Hey, Miss Luna. Hey, Mama Luna. Hey, baby. All right, guys. I'll say the blessed night. All right, Jim. All right, everybody. Have a good night.
Dá pra ir, né?